Hello, I'm Luana. Welcome back to my channel. Now today, you already know what we're going to be talking about because you read the title. I am going to help you identify if you've experienced childhood or developmental trauma. Now this may sound grim, but here's the truth. I get emails and comments on the daily saying, hey, I have experienced a relatively normal, good childhood. I always had food on the table. I had, you know, piano lessons, soccer lessons, and I pretty much knew that my parents loved me. So how come I feel off or how come these illnesses, these autoimmune diseases are finding me in my early 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, right? What's up with that? How come I feel off? Well, this video will help you answer this exact question. Now, before we get started, I want you to know that talking about childhood trauma can bring up anxiety, it can make you feel uncomfortable, and I just want you to know that that's normal. So, if you want to keep watching this video, I would love that you stick around and also just, you know, pay attention to your breath. Notice the support of the chair underneath you, your feet on the ground, and my channel will always be here. So come and watch this video when you feel ready. Also after, make sure you treat yourself well, take a bath, go for a walk, have some nice berries and ice cream. Let's get into the video. So much can happen before we turn 20 years old. All the way from conception, yes, conception, that is part of developmental and childhood trauma, all the way to late teens, let's go with 20 years old. There's so much that can happen in those years that our culture normalizes, but can actually leave long-lasting and debilitating effects on a person's physiology, when I say physiology, I mean body, mind, brain, and soul, really. Um, so this is what we're going to unpack in this video. Some of these experiences that I will be mentioning can be detrimental to a human's sense of self, personal agency, how we relate to the world, to other people, and at the very foundation, it's how our neurology, our biology, and, you know, neurochemistry interlaces and makes up this, you know, human flesh suit that we walk around in. So it has an effect on our immune system, our cardiovascular system, our digestive system, all of the above. Let's go ahead and start with defining what trauma is. Trauma is not in the event itself. It's actually how our nervous system, and more specifically our stress physiology, adapts to an overwhelming experience or experiences. Most of the time in those developmental years in childhood, it will happen more than once, such as neglect. Doesn't just happen once, it'll happen more than once. So it's not in the event itself, it's how our system figures out a way to adapt and survive. That's why people can go through really hard things and still be surviving and here. The difference on the system is that it takes more energy and in my world, we use the language from Stephen Porges, the cost of doing business is way higher when we have experienced childhood and developmental trauma. What is developmental trauma? Most people will say childhood trauma, but I like to be broad and clear in my uh, definition here, so I use the word developmental trauma because our childhood is only a short amount of time, but really developmental trauma is from conception, in utero, at birth, as a baby, as a toddler, 
as a child, preteen, teenager, and then late teens. That is the time span generally of developmental trauma where it can happen. Now, developmental trauma means that there is or are disruptions in that time frame. Disruptions to what? Disruptions to development, to growth. That let's say, for example, uh, in utero there is stress or world events going on or a car accident and the little fetus will actually feel what the human, mom or caregiver, right, feels during the overwhelming stressful event. So most people don't think of this affecting us as we are living our, you know, trying to live our best life in 2021 when I'm filming this video, yet most people I work with, we are working in that space of developmental trauma. Conception, birth, first three to five years of life, and then so on. Another thing to consider in your definition of developmental or childhood trauma is that I personally consider intergenerational trauma wrapped up in my definition as well because at conception two humans come together and those two humans have their own experience of life and as we know from science now in this generation we experience three generations back what our ancestors went through we can experience that right so some people will come to me and they're like well nothing really crazy has happened in my life but i feel this heavy anxiety or this doom weighing on me and then i ask them well where, where are your ancestors from oh there are you know, they were slaves for hundreds of years, they were Holocaust survivors, they were, you know, took a boat from North Africa to have a better life. So all of these experiences that our ancestors, our lineage, that they went through has an impact on who we are today. Considering that developmental trauma is any disruption that happens from conception to late teens. Let's look at some specific examples that can happen in that time span that is considered developmental trauma. Very common ones are emotional neglect, right? Maybe there's an argument between a parent and a child or a child and a child and what happens? The child gets sent to their room to be there alone to figure out how they can do better or sort themselves out emotionally. The child is left alone with these big feelings and we are humans, we're wired to co-regulate with another human to bring our nervous systems down. So as we see, Right? That's a disruption. If that happens again and again and again on a weekly or monthly basis, that has an effect on the system, on your nervous system, and how you deal with stress because it gets all bottled up inside and you know we ha our system has to find other ways to numb, to disassociate in order to cope with what's going on inside. Emotional neglect, right? Um, physical abuse is something that is normalized in many cultures all over the world. I've worked with people from, you know, the United States, Canada, England, Senegal, um, Somalia, Australia. It's physical abuse, slapping, hitting, all of these kinds of things to a child is extremely harmful and instills this sense of shame and unworthiness to the child that they carry for the rest of their lives if they do, don't process it with, you know, a safe other. So physical abuse is a common thing that happens in childhood. Emotional abuse, right, manipulation, um, divorce, 
sexual abuse, uh, loss, grief, um, invasive, invasive surgeries, getting the tonsils out, um, appendix. It specifically can be an attachment dynamic there, or depending on how old you are, the, you know, using ether, there's a reason why we don't use ether anymore. It's because it has a tragic effect on the system. Witnessing verbal abuse, physical abuse, um, in utero uh, trauma, right? If baby is in utero and there's things in the outside world going on, maybe it's verbal abuse, maybe it's physical abuse, the baby feels all the stress of the mom or of, of the, you know, not all people who have wombs identify as women, so of the person that is carrying the child. So in utero, stress is a huge one that not enough people talk about, but I deal with on the daily, right, with helping people one-on-one -on -one and in the groups. Uh, also childbirth, so at birth. It's important to know I'm not saying birth is traumatic. I believe it's very painful. I've not done that for a lot of women and stressful, but it's healthy stress. The flip side of birth trauma, right, can be when uh, forceps need to be used or, you know, if the uh, labor is for a very long time, you know, you hear about those labors that are 24 hours, you know, plus 30 hours, that is, that is very, very stressful on both the mama and the child. So, you know, uh, birth trauma and in utero um, experiences are a big part of developmental and childhood trauma. So that is a condensed list. It's general. Um, I hope that helps you identify what childhood or developmental trauma actually is um, because our culture tends to think that trauma is this like big tragic thing that happens a hurricane a forest fire you know a car accident but it's actually not most of the people I've worked with I would say 98% have never experienced those things but they have experienced everything that I've just listed for you so comment below what are your thoughts if you are noticing a little bit of activation, just notice the seat underneath you, the support of it, the sound of my voice. It's normal to feel, you know, a little bit mobilized and activated when talking about these things, especially if they're still alive in your system. If you would like to dive deeper and read more about this developmental childhood disruptions, I recommend two books and I've linked them up below. Number one is Born for Love, one of my favorite books, Born for Love by Dr. Bruce Perry and Maya Slavitz. The second one is Scared Sick, a classic. It marries the uh, link between adult disease and childhood trauma. Scared Sick by Robin Carr Morse. So both of these books are heavily science-based. They may take more time for you to read through, yet I think it's essential for understanding humanity, science, and this work. So I really encourage you to start by reading at least one of those. And if you would like to dive deeper into this work with me in my online school, make sure you check out the link below. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, comment what is your biggest takeaway, and go ahead and subscribe and stay on the channel. Watch the other videos. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you in the next video.